Hello everybody. Today we will be studying about the organism uh, which causes food spoilage or food poisoning that is bacillus. Now let's see uh, about the history of this organism. It was first named by Christian Gottfried Arnberg in 1835. This organism Bacillus cereus was first isolated by Grace and Pressy Franklin in the year 1887 and it was isolated from cow shed. Okay, uh, then it was studied and explained by this person called as Friedland and Kahn. There were several outbreaks of food poisoning due to this organism in Hungary, in Finland, UK, USA, Japan, etc. If you see the classification of this organism, uh, it is a bacteria and hence it comes under the domain bacteria, class Bacilli, order Bacillales family, Bacillaceae and genus Bacillus. Uh, if we have to study about the morphology and uh, the characteristics of this organism, it is a gram positive rod and uh, they are spore formers. They are high, highly spore formers and hence they are highly resistant to. They can survive in the environment for many days together because they can produce spores. Though they can produce spores, they do not bulge out. They are not plumpy. They are thin, slender, sporulating rods. Uh, they may or may not produce toxin. They are aerobes. Most of them are aerobes and few are facultatively, facultatively anaerobes. These organisms are generally present in soil, uh, in the environment and also they are present in the gastrointestinal tract of the ruminants and, the, and human beings. Now if we have to see which media this organism can be grown on, as this organism is highly resistant, it does not require any specific or enriched kind of nutrients though it can still grow an enriched medium uh, it can be easily grown on nutrient agar blood agar if it is grown on nutrient agar the colonies they are large they are opaque of white colonies okay and feathery in nature if the organism is grown on blood agar you can find them non-hemolytic Bacillus cereus could be beta hemolytic in nature. Beta hemolytic is complete hemolysis. Uh, the important species, there are several uh, organisms, there are several species under this uh, bacillus, but the most important ones are Bacillus cereus, Bacillus anthracis, Bacillus subtilis, and Bacillus megatherium. Coming to Bacillus cereus. Now, why Bacillus cereus? Because this is the organism which causes food poisoning. The others are not much involved in food poisoning, but Bacillus cereus is the one which is involved in food poisoning. What does it cause? It basically causes food poisoning by intoxication, which means it produces toxins, and because of the presence of toxins, it causes gastrointestinal illness. Now, what are the diseases? What generally it causes? It uh, causes two kinds of uh, syndromes or diseases you can say that is emetic syndrome or it is also called as vomiting syndrome and the second one is a diarrheal syndrome or the diarrheal form now let us see what are these now what is this emetic syndrome emetic syndrome is short-lived i mean the uh, even the incubation period is also short and also the disease is also short it's basically acute it doesn't stay for a long time now it is produced from due to the toxin that is uh, released by the microorganism that is called as a emetic toxin it's basically a protein now what happens here is uh, the organisms uh, live can survive in the spore form in the soil it is generally present in the starchy food materials in rice etc so this can stay in rice in the sporulating form but if the rice is stored for a long duration what happens is the spores get converted to the vegetative form easily produce the toxin and then you take in the toxin what are the symptoms symptoms are vomiting nausea gen very few times you can also land up in getting diarrhea what is the incubation period as i told it is a very short acute and also incubation period is very short it is half an hour to five hours within half an hour of the ingestion of the toxin not necessary microorganism toxin uh, and to five hours you may start getting the symptoms and even since it is acute the symptoms disappear within eight to ten hours it is short-lived what are the foods associated as i already told you rice salads potato noodles or the starchy food are associated with this since this organism is present in soil 
all the vegetables since they are definitely grown in the presence of soil easily they uh, the organisms get or the spores of this organism gets transferred onto the skin or into the uh, food surface okay now let us see the second type that is the diarrheal syndrome as the name suggests diarrheal syndrome it's basically it causes diarrhea here it is because of the presence of the organism the previous one was because of the presence of the toxin but this is because of the presence of the organism the organism needs to be there in the food which releases out the enterotoxin okay now what are the symptoms as the name suggests it leads to diarrhea and dysentery abdominal pain incubation is 8 to 16 hours slightly more when compared to that of the previous one here the, the, it is a little long lived and the symptoms disappear within 24 hours so if you see uh, both the symptoms both the types maximum it survives or the symptoms are there within a human being or in a human being maximum say for two to three days it's self-limiting the disease is self-limiting the person gets cured by itself who are the people who are generally susceptible to this people elderly people immunocompromised people children all these are uh, susceptible to the disease how do you prevent it definitely uh, you should prevent the growth of the organism presence of the organism in your food and also prevent the formation of toxin in the food so the best way is do, uh, if the food if you are keeping it has to be kept over 60 degree and if refrigerated it has to be refrigerated at 4 degree or below that now cooking food before you have to cook the food before consumption that is avoid eating um, raw food like your salads etc green leafy vegetables avoid eating them because easily it uh, organism from the soil can get access onto your food surface ensure that the temperature when you're cooking the temperature is up around 72 degree centigrade or before or more than that why because it is a protein the toxin is a protein and the protein at this temperature will get deactivated avoid keeping the food or preserving the food for long duration the organism will be present in the form of spores if you store the food the spores will get uh, you know the required conditions for it to grow and it germinates and after that uh, two vegetative cells and hence they result in producing the toxins so avoid preserving the food avoid storing the food consume the food as fast as it is cooked as i told the spores easily get spread from the soil onto the surface of vegetables and fruits and hence wash the vegetables and other food items thoroughly before eating and using them this organism generally uh, the people recover without treatment as i told the maximum duration is two maximum it is three days within three days the person gets recovered by himself it's a chronic acute infection short-lived now because a person loses lots of fluid and salts oral rehydration is a must and also um, taking in salts because salts are also lost in the process the organism produces the enzyme beta lactamase and hence it cannot be though it is gram positive bacteria it cannot be treated by penicillin it is resistant to highly resistant to penicillin um, in severe conditions if the person case becomes severe the treatment the antibiotics like vancomycin can be given and amino glycosides also could be given thank you